Hi lovelies and welcome to the Witch's Cookery! In bulk blessings to you! Today I'm taking you through my day celebrating in bulk to give you inspiration and ideas on how to celebrate in bulk. This witch vlog will be filled to the brim with fun history, pagan customs, candle mass traditions and in bulk tidbits and a lot of witchery and ritual for the season. We will start today with greeting the first sign of the reawakening nature, planting some ritual seeds then we're going to do some cottage witchcraft, making a traditional in bulk protection charm for your house and learning about the roots of candle magic in folk witchcraft. Unfortunately, then it's also time for some cleaning and cleansing, making space in our lives for the new. We shall hear about ancient weather oracles. And last but not least, what would this video be without a little bit of kitchen witchery? Very traditional, delicious, yummy, perfect. Let's go start our day! Why do we celebrate in bulk and what's the meaning behind the entire holiday? It's sometimes also called midwinter day, so we're actually still in the middle of the winter, but we can see like little traces of the nature reawakening. Spring is getting closer. In some countries, the snowdrops already start to appear as the first blossoms. It's basically giving us hope during those droopy, rainy, gray blah, days for the sun to reawaken. There's some different theories about the etymology of the word in bulk. Some people say that it comes from the term in bulk, in the belly. Not forgetting that all of these names come from a rural context that's probably in relation to lambing season. Now is the time when the sheep will get pregnant or are pregnant, have the little lambs in their bellies, as well as the nature with the seeds germinating again and carrying that life under a little blanket of snow, so to say. What does it mean for you as a modern witch? Now it's time for planting seeds. You can do your garden planning, you can start to pre-germinate seeds in your house, but you can also think more about projects that you want to start. You can now plant a seed for, do all the underworks before the actual plant can arise. Wonderful time to sit down with your planner and really go deep into what you want to achieve this year. There's another theory claiming that it comes from the word oi milk, meaning the lamb's milk. Very similar in meaning as you can see, so it must be some of that. But regardless, in bulk was celebrated in all of Europe under different names. And to this day, we still have similar festivities with the same kind of meaning and symbolic. Now, if you live in America, you also know this as Groundhog Day. And you may or may not know this, but that actually swept over with the German settlers in Pennsylvania. Now for Imbolc, we have a ton of weather oracles. We were still in the midst of winter, so people were very preoccupied with how the next year would be, what it would bring, because obviously they depended upon this for living, for surviving, for food and so on. So the people from Westphalia took the badger, which is a hibernating animal that would come and peek out out of its like burrow around this time as a sign on how long the winter would still last. And the rule was if the badger on the day of candle mass between 11 and 12 in the morning could see his shadow, he would have to stay in his burrow for four more weeks as the winter would still continue. Well, there's no sun today, ergo there's also uh, no shadow to be seen. So, uh, I guess the winter's over here. It's really still cold. 
Well, yes, since it's in Pennsylvania, the badger was not such a common animal. They took another hibernating local animal, which was the groundhog, or in their dialect, the Grundsau. In Germany, that tradition wasn't as strong, so it didn't really survive, but I was really glad it made it over the pond. <laughs> now, a very common symbol for Imbolg is, of course, the candle. The meaning behind that is not quite surprising. It's just a returning of the natural light. The days are becoming longer. The sun is growing stronger and stronger and traditionally now also ends the time of the artificial lights that were used indoors. Now back in the days of course candles were a luxury item. They were not just used like today to set the mood and whatnot. What people used on a daily basis was mostly oil-based, fat or animal blood-based things that would burn in order to keep at least a little bit of light in their house. But there were real wax candles, beeswax candles, for specific purposes, mostly a little bit of folk witchery and very important holidays. And on Candlemas, people would bring all their candle stash for the year to the churches to have them blessed. And it's also said that candles made on Candlemas Day will burn brightest. By the way, also a very fun in bulk activity, especially if you do a lot of candle magic, is to anoint your candles or make spell candles on the day on Imbolc to have them blessed or assigned to certain intentions and purposes and you can then use them throughout the year. Now let's look into some of those folk beliefs surrounding candle magic. Every household needed a red candle because that was the women's candle and it was used in childbed during pregnancy, during birth to protect the mother and the child from any harm the Wetter or Donnerkerze, the weather candle, made out of the rest of old wax that got a little bit like black, you know, that discolored. Every time there was a storm outside, or really bad weather, people would set it in the windows and say the little enchantments or prayer in order for the light of this candle not to go out. It was not allowed to have any other fires in the house at the same time as the weather candle was burning. And it's still a custom that lives on through today in like old farming areas. Especially during Imbolc or Candlemas, it was also a tradition to put a candle in each of the windows of your house because dripping wax from candles was supposed to bring good luck and protection to the house. And another tradition for the day was to put three drops of wax on the bread to bring health to the family. If you're Catholic or have been brought up Catholic, you will also know that after Candlemas is Saint Blast Day, where they do the blessings with the two candles that they will light on fire and cross in front of your throat to prevent any type of throat illnesses. And if you are the little kitchen witch too, you might enjoy my candle themed imbol cake that I made last year, Pastel de Tres Leches. It's Oh, so good! I will leave it linked here and in the description box down below. Now, I do have a little bit of folk witchcraft for you, specifically a traditional one that was made on Imbolc or Candlemas from wax drippings and hung on the stable doors or in the house to protect your family from illness, the evil eye, and with this one specifically from bad dreams or dying in your sleep. Now for a little bit of background, here in this area people believed that bad dreams or dying in your sleep was induced by the Schrattel, the Drut, the Druck in the Drut, or the Elb or the Alp. The German word for bad dream is Albtraum, so a dream induced by the Alp. And that was supposed to be a spirit or some sort of incubus that possessed mainly the women of the household and made them sneak into other people's bedroom at night and sit on their chests so they would get bad dreams or even stop breathing. And in the morning, they wouldn't be able to remember any of it. So the people would make the Drudengattel or Schrattelgrattel, how it's called in an Austrian dialect, to put over the baby's crib or to slip underneath the straw sacks. And it's a pretty easy, fun craft to do in case you are also plagued by bad dreams. Who knows? Maybe psychologically, it keeps them at bay if you try this. Now, a lot of times here in Bavaria, protective symbols were either directly 
carved into beams or wood or made out of hazelwood. Why that is, I leave a video linked above about the lore of the hazelwood. But for Imbolc, it was more common to use candle wax. Let's talk about the symbol real quick. Some say it's the Andrew's cross, which was a very strong protection symbol. Others says it's a combination of the old runes of Man and Ir, symbolizing the connection between the underworld and the upper world. Now, as with every time when I'm starting an arts and crafts project for this channel, it's nothing but despair because I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but I found out the easiest way to do it. So you can draw it on a paper and then cover that with foil and then put like the candle wax over it until you have roughly that shape or you just make a big wax blob and you cut it out. Both these things didn't work so well, but then I remembered a technique that I learned in in the garden where you take a bowl of water you put like little wax dribbles in until you have like a disc so to say made out of wax on this disc you can color with other wax with colored wax obviously so you see a difference you know what I mean I'm so sorry if you are suffering from trypophobia because you probably want to scratch your eyes out right now but yes this is how it came out and you can hang that in your window or in your bedroom or put it on your altar space with the intention to keep the bed out of your house. Little reminder, don't hang it into bright sunlight if you made it out of wax because obviously that, that will melt. Now in bulk nowadays in a modern context is usually celebrated as candle mass or in a Catholic countries it's also known as the purification of Mary. And that for a very long time, since the 5th century to be precise, because that is when Pope Gelasius I decided to substitute the pagan customs with a fitting matching type of holiday and it basically went like all the christianization of the pagan holidays something that was very similar in symbolic and meaning replaced that old holiday of Imbolc but kept a lot of the traditions and customs you might wonder why they called it the purification of mary and that actually lies in the jewish roots of the entire shebang back in the days in jewish belief a woman after giving birth was considered impure and now before you all scream and rage upon this misogyny this also meant that she was prohibited to perform all her regular duties like cleaning the house cooking the food which meant she was to stay in bed chill the f out and cuddle the newborn 40 days for a boy 80 days for a girl Guess girls are just considered more of a handful <laughs> now in Europe we do have a pretty good maternity system but America, I'm looking at you. Take notes. So if you count 40 days from Christmas, you land on candle bars. Now we do know that in an Irish context, Imbolc was also a big cleansing fire festival. Again, before the new comes in, you have to get rid of the old winter stuffiness and so on. So a fun Imbolc activities for you to do, well, fun, <laughs> all is relative, would be cleansing rituals that can be in a bathtub, that can mean smoke cleansing your home but that can also mean doing a little spring cleaning by the way if you're looking for a diy low cost non-toxic no waste magical cleaning product check out my inbox vlog from last year because i put a little a recipe in there that you can use for mundane as well as magical cleaning donating selling old things cutting ties with toxic people unsubscribing from all the newsletter thingies that you get in your email don't so Spirit of Imbolc, I decided to finally battle the space. You know how some people have like a messy drawer where they put all the little things they find around the house? Well, I took that to a whole other level. I have an entire upper floor filled with crap. People, I can't have you laboring under the assumption that I live in this perfect, cute little witch's cottage. I do, for the most part. Like, I, I keep the living area semi livable, but. <sighs> Let's just get this over with. I'll just show you. This poor dude has been laying here since uh, the end of uh, December. Um, okay, wand, glue stick, um, sheets, beeswax, and then. Bum, bum, bum. You could always use a glass jar, so why not stuff it up in the attic where no one can see it and you forget about it? Residue of abandoned hopes and uh, dreams, abandoned career choices, baby clothes, a ton of things for DIY beauty crafting, cooking that I have like 
double and triple and quadruple. Oh, look, another one of the advanced calendar dudes. I knew that I ordered one. Smash decor, all just like thrown. But who has time for organizing? Apparently not me. I can't even walk here. I don't know where to step. Which uh, didn't stop me from still making a mess here. Now, my dear fellow hoarders, we get to the... The, the place that's hard to reach it's always like semi-organized over there because there's just too much in the way to climb over there if you're not of legal age yet i need you to close your eyes now and keep them shut for the next uh, three seconds because the things you find here could tell you all types of things about my life that uh, no biography could ever cover <laughs> an entire act and it's uh, far from being done but I am done so I'm sorry. Tomorrow is another day. Plus I can absolutely justify that with another fun pagan Imbolc tradition. Now what a lot of people don't know is that Imbolc is also a day that is heavily associated with women and fertility. To be precise, kickstarting a woman's fertility and letting them rest. The lovely Estonia, for example, statistically the most pagan country in all of Europe, also celebrates Candle Day or Kuhn Le Path. Not vouching for the pronunciation of this. But the day also has a different name, which I will butcher in just a second. Nice de Puha. And that is actually the name of the red colored drink that is consumed on that day and is also the Estonian folk name for St. John's Wort. If you're a little bit into herbalism, if you play around with herbs, you know that St. John's Wort has a very reddish color inside. So back in the days, that plant was actually used to color the drinks for the ladies on that day, either beer or vodka, and the ladies would go to the pub while the men stayed at home and did the housework and really had an awesome time drinking, celebrating. I do believe that Scotland celebrates something similar on the 2nd of February, the Wife's Day, but if you know more about that, comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> and the entire spiel about a red drink was in order to get some blood in their cheeks, to have their cheeks red again, to make them look healthy, to make them look fertile again. After the long winter, obviously Estonia is also quite far in the north, so you have very dark winters too, very depressing. And as we know, St. John's Wort is a natural antidepressant as well. It was just the day for the women to get out of that winter slump again, to re-strengthen them. Now these traditional red drinks were then consumed with barley stews, with a lot of pork meat, protein rich. You won't find a lot of greenery there, which also makes sense because around that time of year, all the fresh green stuff was not there, not provided by nature, and people had run out of most of their stocks. So you had a lot of vitamin, mineral deficiencies, people getting really sick. So they used the time to really fatten up eggs milk, butter, fat. That's what people had left, what they could use. Food items that were said to bring back fertility to the person who would eat it. So they threw it together. Crepe, pannekoek, pannekoeken, pancake. Very, very traditional in many European countries for that day. All of those lovely fattening treats especially prepared for the women. So the spirit of pagan in bulk traditions, I too shall rest now with my fake wine. Now this idea around a little break or a festivity around candle mass is not only home to those countries, it was actually celebrated like that in many European countries because candle mass marked the break in the rural year or the beginning of a new rural year. So farmhands and maids would either choose to continue at their farm or move on to a new employer and for three days until Saint Agatha Day they were on holidays and they got paid for the entire year. So needless to say that was usually celebrated with a ton of good food and 
booze, candle mass balls, and so on. And in Bavaria, we have known this time as the Schlenkelwei. And women could let their hair down there too. Because it was actually a custom for the farmhands and the guy in the house to pay the maid that was in charge of changing their straw sack, not a euphemism by the way, in the mornings after they slept, the so-called flea beer as a little thank you of uh, keeping them free of the, the fleas. Now you can probably imagine if you were the maid in charge of changing all the straw sacks, you had a very good chance landing on one of the same later that night after the consumption of uh, one too many flea beers. But we shall not speak further of this. Now of course it was also a traditional dish that went with Schlenkelwei and it incorporated all those traditional items of fat, milk, butter and eggs. And it is what probably most English speakers know as a filled donut, but we call it the Schlenkelwei noodle. Now how can you make this fattening treat for yourself? Easy! Just take all the ingredients that are listed down below in the description box and then you put them in a bowl and you knead them together. The dough might be a little bit sticky, but you know, like just put in a little bit more flour if you need to and then you let it sit for half an hour. In the meantime, we need a baking tray and then we want to oil that up just for extra fat and also so that the, the noodle don't stick on it. Once your dough has like doubled, you take it and knead it one more time and then you roll it into those little balls that you kind of like drag out a little bit because noodle in German refers to either pasta or a slightly elongated type of like thick yeast bread. <laughs> but more, more in Bavaria, not so much in German. Then you just cover them up for about 10 minutes so they don't dry out and in the meantime you prepare the fat. Now I am using butter fat and this is ridiculously unhealthy. Using oil here is still a sin but it's not quite as horrible as this but taste wise this is the best you can use. You just have to be careful because the fat cannot get too hot so use a thermometer and once it has reached 165 degrees celsius you plop your little Schlenkelwein noodle in the hot fat. Don't put in too many because then their bath water cools down too much maybe too and in order for them to really like rise and get nice and fluffy put a lid on so the steam that this creates also kinds of you know puffs them up and then after three minutes or so you take a, a wooden uh, thingy what's that called wand <laughs> kitchen witch want <laughs> and just turn around pop the lid back on leave it in there for two three more minutes don't make them too thick so also the inside really gets like made through and you repeat that with each of the thingies now in order to make this a really yummy traditionally they are filled with jam and what we love to use is either rose hips jam or a plum jam it tastes both delicious i never know where my stupid piping bags are so i tried it that way of course it didn't work um, was an entire mess but you could also just like cut them open and uh, you know like just use a knife that's basically it now you just dust them with a little bit of powdered sugar and you serve them still warm oh my god so good or the next day with your coffee in the morning <gasps> delish <laughs>